Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sun. Today we're going to be graphing square root and cube root functions and doing the domain and range for both. So let's get into it. Now a square root function looks like so. It has a square root and then I always like to think about changing the sign and keeping the sign because this is a vertex form. So we change the sign of what's underneath the square root. That would make this 3. And you keep the sign of what's on the outside. That would make that 5. So the negative 3 changed to positive 3. And the 5 stayed positive 5. You plot that point at 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dot. And then your graph will either curve upward or curve downward depending on what is in front. If it is positive, your graph will curve upward like so. Much like a sideways parabola because remember parabolas are like this, but only half of it. Okay? So it is going to curve upward from left to right, and there is your graph. That is the basic, basic graph. Some teachers will ask you to plug in a point. I do not typically ask my students to plug in a point, but if you did, I would recommend plugging in the point one further to the right or to the left, preferably to the right because it's going to the right. So if you plugged in four, what would you end up with? Well, that would be four minus three plus five. The square root of one plus five is... 1 plus 5, which is 6. So this very next point is at 4 comma 6. Um, I do not require it for my students, though. It depends on the teacher. What I do require is the domain and the range. The domain and the range. Well, the domain is going to the right from this x value of the vertex, which was 3. So the domain is x is greater than or equal to 3. You could also say from 3 to positive infinity. The range is also a tricky point because the range is going up in this case. So the range is y is greater than or equal to 5 because it's going up from the 5. And it would be 5 comma infinity. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's say we had y is equal to the negative square root of x plus 6. Okay, so this graph, change the sign, keep the sign, there's nothing to change, it would be 0, comma 6. It also is negative, so that's going to influence our graph as well. I'm going to plot the point at 0, comma 6. Because it's negative, instead of curving up, it is going to curve down. And everything else kind of remains the same. Domain and range, still required by my students. So the domain is still going to the right. It's still moving to the right. So the domain is x is greater than or equal to not 6, but 0. You could also say from 0 to infinity. The range, however, is not going up. It is going down, and it is going down from the 6. So we got to say less than or equal to 6, which would be including 6, to negative infinity, which is wrong. You're not supposed to write it in that order. You're supposed to write the negative infinity to positive 6. Oops. So negative infinity to positive 6, and it should have a parentheses around the negative infinity because you can't equal it. Um, I like the inequality notation with these for these problems. I don't know why. I think it's a little bit easier. Okay. Let's do some cube roots. Let's do some cube roots. Cube roots are very similar to square roots. They are not harder. That is the good news. So let's say y is equal to the cube root of x minus 5. Let's go with plus 5. Why not? Okay. So if it's a cube root, that means nothing in terms of your change the sign, keep the sign. It's still going to be change the sign, keep the sign, yet change the 5 to negative 5, but there's nothing on the outside. That's why you got a 0. You could have a plus 0 there. So we got negative 5 comma 0. If it is positive in front, you start by graphing what seems like a positive square root. But because it's a cube root, instead of just doing the positive square root, you also have to kind of do this mirror image thing where you're going to do the same looking graph, but also go in the opposite direction, kind of making it symmetrical. Okay? So I kind of messed that one up because I didn't want to go through the 5. So it would be looking more like this. There we go. That looks a little better. 
So it's symmetrical around that point. It's going up and to the right and then down and to the left. Okay, let's do the domain and the range. Well, the domain, you may notice, is, uh, is going left and right forever. Oh my goodness, I can't write at all today. The domain, I'm gonna write out the whole word so I don't mess this up, is going left and right forever. So that would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, although it may be going up and down slowly, is still going left forever and right forever. So the domain and range for every single cube root is all real numbers, which is kind of nice because then you just write all real numbers. It's also kind of boring because then you end up writing all real numbers for every domain and range for every single cube root in existence. Let's do one more cube root, one more. Y equals, let's do a five, negative five. Why not? Cube root of X plus one minus no plus three. Okay, here, change the sign, keep the sign, negative 1, comma 3. So we can plot that point to the left 1, and then up by 3, dot. And the negative in front indicates instead of going up from left to right, we're going to have to go down from left to right, and it's going to have to be symmetrical that way. Now that is the rough shape. But if you wanted to be more accurate, you could plug in a point immediately to the right of negative one. What point is to the right of negative one? Zero. If you plug in zero, you can get a little bit more accurate. Let's see what happens if we do, because this negative five does influence the problem a little bit. That would be where we're gonna do it. Negative five cube root of zero plus one plus three. Ends up being negative five times the cube root of one plus three, which is negative five times one plus three. Negative five times one plus three is negative five plus three, which is negative two. So I was a little off, wasn't I? Because does my graph at zero at negative two? Not quite. So if I wanted to be more accurate, it would need to curve down through the negative two and then curve up a little bit higher, which tells you something it tells you that that number in front behaves very similar to a slope. Because if you look, how much did we go down and how much did we go over by? We went down by five and over by one, but that's only for the very next point because later on, it's gonna slow down a little bit. It's not gonna go as quickly. It's gonna kind of level out and almost look like it flat lines, but it doesn't. It keeps curving slowly downward. It's just for that very, very first point, this is quote unquote, your slope. It's not for the whole thing. It's only for that very next point. Okay, so that does tell you that if you were to have something like this, where it's y equals 10 square root of x, it would be curving and going up a lot versus y equals the square root of x would go up a little bit sooner. It would start flat lighting a little bit quicker. All right. Until next time, I will see y'all later. We do have another graphing video on these, but with inequalities, they look very similar, but the domain and range gets a little trickier when you have shading involved. Till next time, I will see y'all later. Bye.